biggest news, but there's actually bigger news even for women's yeah. rights. And now I will punt it over to you, Danielle, because I saw it off of your retweet, off of the person who should have been president, but unfortunately she has ovaries. Uh, yes. Hillary Clinton talked about the following that is happening in Alabama. So Hillary Clinton tweeted, quote, I'm not seeing enough people talking about this horrific move by Republican officials in Alabama to restrict women's freedom of movement. You've got to be kidding me. And just to give folks um, a little bit of context to her tweet, which is Alabama Attorney General Steve Marshall said the state can prosecute people who help women travel out of state for abortions in response to a lawsuit filed by a pro-abortion rights group and owners of women's clinics. Mm. Marshall filed a motion Monday uh, in federal court to dismiss a lawsuit filed by providers, the ACLU and Yellowhammer Fund, which helped fund abortions in Alabama before the U.S. Supreme Court struck down the right to an abortion with the Dobbs decision. So basically... Um, what I, uh, quote retweeted from the woman who should have been president of the United States, but did not, uh, become president was this. So it's not enough to ban abortion in Alabama. Now the Republican cult is banning free movement of pregnant women. If y'all don't wake the fuck up, we allow this, uh, to did just say that? Oh, is yes, that, I did. Is that no, verbatim? I said this. Yes, this is me verbatim. Um, because here's the thing that I pointed out, Waj, is that when you're looking at these state by state, the way the Republican Party is dismantling democracy, the way that they are passing legislation with their super majorities that they have gotten because of gerrymandering and oppressing votes in a whole host of ways to have overt power in that state is that it is everyone said, oh, they're not going to overturn abortion, right? We watched the Supreme Court justices that were appointed by the twice impeached disgraced rapist, former president of the United States say before the Senate Judiciary Committee that what's precedent is precedent. Mm. So we said, oh, OK, we'll trust them. I don't understand why, because they were appointed by a serial fucking liar. Nonetheless, they go ahead, they do the Dobbs decision, and we say, well, that's okay, because these women, right, even though they may be low income, even though they have to travel hundreds of miles, they'll still be a patchwork of protect protections around the country. And now, and now Alabama is saying, oh, pretty much. This is Gaza, and you're not allowed to fucking leave. Yeah. Right? right? And if you do, maybe they'll sue the airline. Maybe they'll sue the, oh, the Uber drivers. Maybe they'll sue, you know, Amtrak. Who the fuck knows? But it's, you're it's not. part of a conspiracy, right? That's it. Right. Because you're not, as a pregnant person, able to leave the state of Alabama because not only do they control your uterus, they control your entire being. And there's no democracy there. It's, you know, when we when we make the example or the analogy of Handmaid's, Handmaid's Tale, uh, the novel written by Margaret Atwood that was also made into a, a TV show, people say, oh, it's so extreme. You're being hateful. It's not like that. It's not under, you know, his eye. We're not making women wear robes and be, you know, handmaidens who basically their only purpose, if you have not read the book or seen the movie, is to be sex servants to white Christian men, right? They lay down there and they get raped by these men and their job is just to produce babies for them. That's it. And people say, oh, how dare you say that? No. And, you know, it's, it's just not, they're going to let women read and have rights. This is just about <laughs> abortion. Uh, right. No. Uh, and not only, and I'm glad you said this, Danny, you'll give those examples. It's anyone who can help that woman, right? So if you're, like you said, a taxi cab driver or even doctors right now, let's let's stop talking about fiction. Even right now, uh, in Arkansas, medical providers are hesitant to do, you know, life-saving abortions, which, by the way, if you know anything about a woman's body or pregnancy, this happens all the time, folks. Uh, abortions happen all the time to save the life of the mother or if the baby is dead to get the baby out. That's an abortion, right? But 
if you're a medical provider, you'd be like, whoa, 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 I don't know. I mean, I want to help you. But if I if this is seen as an abortion, then I'm a co-conspirator and I can be in jail for more than 10 years. It's about control. It's about cruelty. Right. And and this is something that you would think you would think. Uh, white women, the majority of whom, I'm sorry to say this, white women, I know you are listeners, we love white women, some of our favorite women are white women, uh, <laughs> especially the moderate white woman, my favorite white woman. But the, the data shows a slim majority of white women voted for Trump in 2016, and even a greater number voted for him in 2020. So it's one of those situations where you sit there and you go, what will it take, Danielle, for women to realize, yo, they ain't messing around. They went after abortion. Now, if you use Alabama as as, as a as if you will, like as a laboratory for the right wing fever dreams, and uh, let me say their wet dreams, uh, they're going to restrict your movement. And then also, when I bring out, and I know you bring out both on the show and on social media, that they're coming after contraceptives and they're coming after marriage equality because they have told you. Mm -hmm. What makes you think they won't? What makes you think they won't? Especially after what you just told me right now, what's happening in Alabama. You know, and, and, and the thing is, we always in America like to sit up on our high horse and we like to look down on other countries, you know, particularly those whose majority religion is something other than uh, white Christian nationalism. I'm sorry, Christianity. <laughs> um, and so, you know, you'll look, at Iran and the uprising that happened there by led by women, right? Um, whose rights as they rolled into a full fledged authoritarian state in the mid 1970s, um, lost a lot of their, a lot of their rights, right. right? Um, and these women were fighting back because they have been abused over the last 40 to 50 years. And we'll look at Afghanistan and the United States goes in there, occupies the nation. They turn it back over to the Taliban. And now women are banned from leaving their homes mm. and are no longer able to attend school, are mm. no longer able to work. And they're no longer able to go to hairdressers, which you may roll your eyes at. But that was the place, a meeting space for women um, to be safe with one another, right. And to talk and, and connect and share. And that network, um, has been dismantled. And if this were happening in any other country, it would be headline news yeah. in the foreign affairs section of every major outlet. But because it is America doing this to other Americans, we're pretending still that this is somehow a both sides issue. I still hear fucking analysts talking about tribalism. This is not tribalism, nope. right? Just like we talked about last week, shit being racially tinged. It's not, right? So you have this, this, this notion that if you were to remove Republican from it and insert any other nation's political party, and I use that in quotation marks, we would put them on a list. Yes, right. right. The United Nations would have them on a list. We were already called in 2021 a backsliding democracy. And you're seeing Democrats continue to tell people to vote. They vote in mass and Republicans say, fuck you and your vote. Yeah, we have power. And we have, what are you going to do and about we, it? And we have no. And, and what's the recourse? Because what I heard on cable news with regard to what is happening is that there is none. Right. Like. There's just, there's nothing we can do. Yeah, it's well, it's one of those things, you know, Danielle, when when a lot of our majority, but not exclusively white fellow Americans, who, by the way, are the real Americans from the heartland and are electable and live in the suburbs, because Danielle and I, we're just these, these Morlocks who just emerged from the swamps. <laughs> You know, and like, oh, sunlight, it burns, it burns. You know, we live oh on the fringes. Uh, we're not real Americans, but they, you know, they have a lot of economic anxiety, Danielle, and we have to understand their pain and their rage and frustration. And we have to do everything in our power to mollify them. And if we, God forbid, uh, get frustrated that, you know, oh, I don't know, someone who's black might just get shot or killed uh, for breathing in America. Uh, you have to 
you know, we can't be angry about it. We just have to, we have to gently tell people, hey, you know, we just want to breathe if you don't mind. And if, you know, you're brown skinned, you know, don't, you know, just be, do friendly Arabic in the plane. Even if you're doing a little prayer, just nice Arabic, just smile, but don't smile too much because that, that'll be freaky. And, and, you know, if you're a woman, don't, don't, don't you don't want to be seen as bossy, Danielle, you know, you don't want to lean in too hard. Uh, so you just kind of lean around. And so just just police <laughs> your anger and, and make sure that you don't rile up the economic anxiety of so many of our Americans who are part of this MAGA movement who literally, and I use the word literally as it's meant to be used, tell us to our face, we don't care about freedom. We don't care about democracy. We don't care about your rights. We care about power. And with that, you have inspired me to spin the wheel. And I'm yes. spinning the wheel and I'm going to stay in the South. And now I'm going to land in another fantastic bastion of equality and diversity and wokeness, Arkansas. And in Arkansas, the former governor, well, the former governor of Arkansas, Mike Huckabee, as of this recording, just an hour ago, I I'm going to tell you what he said. And I want your oh, thoughts on this, dear. Daniel. Mm -hmm. This is on Twitter. It just came out like an hour and a half ago on, on his TV show, because apparently that's what happens for Republicans who after they become politicians, they just go on TV and get a lucrative career as a host. He says, if Trump doesn't win in 2024, quote, it is going to be the last American election that will be decided by ballots rather than bullets. End quote. <laughs>